All right, I want you to see if you can try and figure out what all of these articles have in common. Let's get started. Largest EV charging station in the world powered by diesel powered generators. Uh, Tesla's massive 98 stall California supercharging station has diesel generators to supplement power needs. Tesla's dirty little secret on California's I-5. But as with many Tesla related things, there's a secret thinly obscured by an Oz like curtain at the Harris Ranch supercharger hidden in plain sight across the way from the Harris Ranch Superchargers main stations behind the shell station is a small diesel plant that has helped power Tesla's footprint. Jalopnik, Tesla's Mega 90H supercharger locations runs in part on a diesel generator report. Benzinga, the dark side of Tesla's largest supercharger, is a diesel generator still powering it. The Epic Times, diesel plant found behind the biggest Tesla EV charging station. Oil industry insider David Blackman notes the irony of diesel powered superchargers and says rising EV use is a huge problem for the US power grid. Daily Caller, Tesla Tesla supercharger station powered by diesel generators. Energy's transition absurdities. Monday's energy absurdity, America's largest EV charging station is powered by, you guessed it, diesel. And the last one, what's up with that? The irony of green charging stations, the Harris Ranch Tesla supercharger station, largest EV charging station in world powered by diesel generators. So could you figure out what all of these articles have in common? If not, I'm about to spoil it, so pause the video. The thing that all of these articles have in common is that none of them did their research. None of them did any research at all when they're posting this, this sort of thing, the largest EV charging station in the world powered by diesel generators. That makes a really good headline. It sounds insane. It sounds like, ah, oh, these aren't green. They're powered by diesel, just like your diesel truck or whatever. But the truth of it is that none of the writers of these articles did their own research. And that's what's so incredibly frustrating to me about today's media climate is that you'll so often get one story come out and then you'll have 10 or 20 or 100 more stories covering that story, but nobody seems to investigate the original claim. But I do because I'm weird like that and I wanna know the actual truth. So I went and did investigate the actual claim and there's actually some pretty interesting stuff that comes about. Number one, the claim is from 2015. It's from this journalist and he posted this video which is allegedly showing that there's a diesel generator powering the Harris Ranch battery swap station. But here's the problem with that. If you go to the people who actually own the buildings and own the property that the supercharger is on, it's owned by Harris Ranch and it's leased by Tesla. And Harris Ranch put out their own statement to fight this misinformation and it goes a little something like this. Harris Ranch refutes misinformation on property use. Amid swirling internet rumors and concerns brought forth by our valued patrons, Harris Ranch Hospitality Division is addressing a particular false statement circulating online. A quote attributed to Andrew Pridgen claiming hidden in plain sight across the way from the Harris Ranch Supercharger's main stations behind a shell station is a small diesel plant that's helped power Tesla's footprint has sparked a flurry of inquiries and concerns. Setting the record straight, we categorically deny the allegations posed by this statement for the following reasons. The building indicated is not, nor has it ever been a diesel plant. Initially a car wash station, it was converted into a battery swap out station in 2015 and is now a storage facility and office for the Heritage Ranch Express barbecue management team. Also features a walk-in refrigerator. There are no diesel plants or diesel generators on our property, a point we fervently assert. While we host Tesla's charging infrastructure, it is crucial to note that Tesla merely leases the property from Harris Ranch. We neither own nor operate the charging stations. So that's the owners of the property saying in no uncertain terms, I mean, they, they could not have been clearer that there are no diesel plants or diesel generators on the property, a point we fervently assert. Okay, but we need to take a second, just take a deep breath so that I don't become unhinged. And let's use this second to talk about today's sponsor, Exter. Exter has a whole lineup of premium wallets and other daily carry essentials, but my favorite in their line is this one, which is their Parliament wallet. It's made out of premium leather, it has a spot to hold your cash and extra cards. And my favorite part, unlike other slim wallets, is that it's actually easy to get your cards out because they have this little button which will slot up all of your cards for you. It's little changes like this that turn a good wallet into a great wallet because you don't have to spend that extra time fishing around 
around for those cards, they're all perfectly fanned out and easy to choose from. Also, the aluminum card holder itself protects from RFID skimming, unlike a traditional only leather wallet. Another thing that I love about this wallet is they also built a tracker that goes right along with it so you can GPS track your wallet if you ever lose it. And one of the coolest parts about this tracker, unlike almost every other tracker I've seen out there, is it's solar powered. So all you have to do is leave it out in the sun for a little bit or in some light, and then you can charge it up to full. So you theoretically never have to replace the battery on this thing, you just leave it out in the light. Look at how thin that is. It's like maybe two credit cards thick. And you don't have to take my word for it. Their Parliament wallet has over 10,000 five-star reviews on their site. So this thing is absolutely amazing and it clearly stands the test of time. Get up to 55% off by using the link below and using code Sam Alexander at checkout. So check them out in the description below and thanks again to Exter for sponsoring this video. Okay, now that we're nice and relaxed, let's get our blood pressure back up. Here we go. So this is what drives me crazy. You have a whole bunch of articles coming out that say stuff along the lines of the world's largest supercharging station in Harris Ranch is powered partially by diesel generators. And while that'd be fine to publish if it was true, none of the writers of these articles even went out to go see, hey, is this actually true? Before they published the article, you would think a critical thing is, hey, I'm gonna put out this article where the headline is largest EV charging station in the world powered by diesel generators. Maybe I should go check if it's actually powered by diesel generators, but yet, None of them do. And this is what I find so infuriating about today's media is that they just do not do the research. And what's even crazier to me is that if you look at the source of their information, all of them, their source is this one guy, he's a, a journalist, and this is the guy who published in 2015 this video that's allegedly showing a diesel generator at the supercharger station. And I can't say for sure what he's trying to say, a diesel generator. I don't know if he's trying to say the building isn't, but Harris Ranch confirmed that the building isn't. It was a car washing station and it's been converted to a battery swapping station, but it is not a diesel generator. So then my next guess, since it's not that, is that he's saying this right here is the diesel generator in question, and that's the thing charging. But as you can tell, this is a mobile generator, and honestly, I'm not even sure if it's a generator, but it's clearly towed by a trailer and is not a permanent solution. And to add insult to injury, like we talked about before, this is eight years ago. So. All of these articles are basing their information off of a video that was like 17 seconds long from eight years ago. And this is what I find so frustrating. You'll have an article like this one from Cowboy State Daily, which is clearly a Texas focused uh, publication. And if we go through and actually read what they're saying, look at this. They're saying right here, investigative journalist Edward Niedermeyer, I hope I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not Edward, discovered that the station was powered by diesel generators hidden behind the shell station. Reporters at SF Gate tried to find out how much of the station's electricity was from the generators, but couldn't get a response from Tesla. So what I'm seeing is they are quoting their source, which was the original guy from 2015, and then they're also quoting this other article, SF Gate, which was quoting their original source from 2015. So they did do a little bit of Googling around, and I find it very hard to believe that when they were doing this Googling around to find these other articles, they didn't also see that, hey, look, Harris Ranch, the owners of the land, they also put out a statement correcting these claims and saying that they're not true. And even if we give them the benefit of the doubt and said like, oh, they just didn't do enough research and they didn't see it. Well, guess what? The truth of the matter is that information is out there now and they need to update this article. And I'm not calling out this publication specifically. I'm calling out all these publications who put Put out this wrong information and then don't go back and change it even though there's correct information out there. What that tells me is they're not actually interested in giving you or I, their readers, they're not interested in giving us the right information. They're interested in pushing an agenda and the agenda in this case is ah Tesla's wrong, Tesla is bad, they're using diesel to power their EVs, so therefore their EVs are bad and they're not very environmentally conscious. That's the narrative they try to push, that's the narrative that they have to push, so that's what they're pushing regardless of what the actual information shows. So someone needs to hold these publications accountable. And believe you me, I pulled up like, I don't know, 10 articles or something like that. It was just the first 10 that I, after I Googled that had gotten it wrong. That was by no means all of the articles that were getting it wrong. So two, Cowboy State Daily, go correct your article. Two, 
Auto Spies, go collect your article. To SF Gate, go correct your article. To Jalopnik, go correct your article. To Benzinga, go correct your article. To the Epic Times, go correct your article. To Daily Caller, go correct your article. To What's Up With That, go correct your article. To Blackman Substack, go correct your article. And again, these are not all of them. These were just some of the ones that I pulled up. And because I wanna make it as easy for these publications as possible to get their information right, here, right here, I'll leave the link in the description. Here is the link to the Harris Ranch publication where they put out Harris Ranch refutes misinformation on property use. I will give you the source. All you have to do is update your articles. It's so easy. I'm not a journalist. I'm doing this for free. So just take my free information. I'm doing your jobs for you. All right, sorry, I got a little too ranty there. This type of thing just upsets me because you see it all the time and it's so easy to get it right that it makes me think that they're doing it maliciously. There's just no way that they didn't do a little bit of Googling while they were writing these articles and they didn't see, oh, actually that information is wrong. I just don't buy it anymore and I'm getting frustrated with playing the act like, oh, these journalists are just bad at their job. They may be bad at their job, but they're also pushing out misinformation. So. That's what it is. 